Ryan with Allen Steel, and today we are going to be putting new carbides onto stump grinder teeth. This is the old tooth. We had removed the carbide already in our previous video, and we're going to be adding new carbides. Nice and shiny. And today we're going to be doing that with an oxyacetylene torch because we can pinpoint the heat where we want it and that way I can watch the silver solder as it liquefies to make sure we are seated properly in the gullet of the tooth. So let's show you how it's done. So now to get started you gotta make sure you have the right tools. So what I like to use are a couple decommissioned flat blade screwdrivers. That way you can adjust and center the carbide without having to touch it because it's going to get very hot and you could get burned. A pair of needle nose that way I can hold the silver solder where I want it and then keep my hands free from the heat. A pair of channel locks so I can set the carbides into the gullet. Of course, oxycetylene torch and the striker. And then of course, you're also gonna have your eye protection and I have some welding gloves I will be using as well. That way I don't burn my hands. And then you're also gonna need some flux, which I am using black bracing flux. It comes in a, this little jar. If it dries out, you can just add a little bit of water to it and mix it back up and then reliquify it a little bit. You want it kind of like the consistency of toothpaste. That way it's easy to spread. And I like to use either the screwdriver or a nylon brush or like a toothbrush, just something to kind of brush it on there. And it's, it works the same as regular soldering flux you would for electrical work or plumbing work. It works the same. So you get it heated up to critical to its melting point and then you set the carbide on top and allow it to cool once you've adjusted it. And when it cools, it binds it to the gullet. Now in this step here, we're gonna take some flux, get some on your brush. Doesn't take mu too much. Take a tooth and we're just gonna put some on, just brush it on. It's okay, you want it kind of built up because while it's heated up, when the flux liquefies, it allows the solder to follow it. So you wanna get a nice general even coating. And you're gonna do the same on our stump grinder tooth. Brush them in. And these tooth teeth already have some silver solder on there, so we don't have to add too much. We'll add a little bit as we need. And you wanna get it into the gullet. In the corner and the bottom of the gullet right here, that holds your tooth in. So you wanna really make sure you get some in there. And when we heat it up, the silver solder is gonna stick it in like that. And we wanna make sure we're square and we're lined up evenly. That way when the tooth connects to a stump, it wears evenly. Another thing to keep in mind as you do these, your vise is going to heat up. So this can burn you too after a few teeth because this sucks in the heat from the tooth, just like on your anvil when you put hot steel on it, it pull, draws the heat out of the material you're working with. So make sure you're careful about not touching this as you go because this will get hot enough to burn you too. Just keep that in mind. A little trick that's helped me over the years doing this is when you put your tooth in the vise, put it up at an angle so that way the gravity will help keep your carbide in the gullet right here so when you set it in you don't try and have to hold it in place because it'll basically hold it for you
there it is, nothing to it. Now that the tooth is cold enough to touch, we can inspect it. And we wanna make sure there's enough silver solder that goes all the way around the perimeter because that means it's evenly distributed behind the tooth. So this is what we're looking for. You can see that there's that gold silver color between the tooth and the gullet on the bottom too. This is critical down here because all it, this is holds all the leverage from the cutting edge, which is this top edge. Looks pretty good. And a nice way to check to make sure this is this works is simply just do the drop test. Drop it on a hard concrete floor or you know off your workbench. The kind of impact this thing has to withstand, that just helps make sure that you have it evenly distributed. And as you can see, because carbide is so rugged, we'll wipe off the concrete dust and it didn't even hurt the edge because this stuff is so durable for what it has to do when it pulverizes stumps into a powder and you hit rocks and granite and all kinds of crap in the ground. So this stuff has to be rugged. But that's all there is to it, uh, to rebraze re tooth on. I'm actually gonna try uh, my forge. I haven't rebrazed it the same way I took these off by heating them up to critical, taking them out and then soldering them on. I think it might be a lot faster. So I'm gonna do a video on that and we'll try that at the shop. And I can, at the, at the minimum I can do I can get them heated up and do like five at a time. So it's gonna save me a lot of work versus the oxycetylene, which is one at a time. But thanks for joining me guys. Like and subscribe and hit that bell button to make sure you don't miss any of these cool videos. And if you wanna see something, uh, just throw it in the comments. Uh, send me a message on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook if you wanna see any kind of videos. Um, I'm gonna be doing a how to get started, what you need uh, tooling list for anybody who wants to get involved in blacksmithing or bladesmithing. And I'm going to give you a short list of just enough, just enough so you can get started. But thanks for joining me, guys. And as always, keep the forges lit and the anvil singing. Take care.